Moving your pawn to the west is she prepared? Um, this is something people overlook and it's often not even thought about and this is, it can be an absolute nightmare sometimes. Um, the first thing is there's a lot of manipulation with other Filipinos, for example, if you're coming out of the Philippines. There's a crab mentality that often exists. There's people who quite happily tell your partner how they can exploit the situation to financially divorce you and take as much money as they can. Bizarrely, why people think this is normal, acceptable conversations, um, I don't know. But it's often the fact that they've divorced their partner, so they're quite happy to see everybody else miserable. But that's one thing you need to speak to your partner about and explain it goes on and you know re really actually have a solid think about this the other thing is are you even in a real relationship ah this this mosquito that's driving me crazy at the minute <laughs> um because the, the reality is a lot of guys aren't they're not in real relationships it's very superficial and on the surface woman wants money guy wants a pretty woman but and that that's superficial it, it may not last and the point being on that is if you go to the west and somebody finds she wants you in the divorce court and trying to get whatever she can did you set yourself up for fault in the first place now this may sound very um defensive or whatever for a guy but at the end of the day it's just being realistic if you're not in a real relationship take it on board because I've had a few guys complain that their wife left them as soon as they went to the West. But I already knew their relationships were soured before they even got that far. The, the woman was quite um, accommodating. I think that would be the polite way of doing it. Um, she just put up with it, things. While she was in the Philippines, she was just quite happily just pat around, do her stuff make guys dinner, do this and that, blah, blah, blah. Not really engaged in a real relationship. You'll see it where they on the mobile phones and stuff, and it's like there's separate lives going on. And the guy is sort of like, well, I don't really want to, she sits and watches TV all day, I can't bother with that, I'll go out and meet my friends, blah, blah. If you're already in a relationship that is that far apart, be aware, you may get seriously burned, you may lose their nice house you've already got in the West or whatever and prepare yourself for it. If you have got a real relationship though, um, I have to say, I do find that a lot of the Eastern women I know uh, with a Western husband complement each other. And, and this is not knocking Western women, I just uh, quite simply, I see a difference. Um, a friend of mine, for example, his wife is Thai, well she is Thai, um, they've got happy little family together, they've got paid off their mortgage, nice nice four bedroom house, they got a restaurant back in Thailand, the the guy works quite happily, doesn't he doesn't go out drinking anymore, doesn't um, doesn't cut work because he used to do predominantly agency work because he just worked when he needed to, so he didn't really work full time. Um, but Paul completely changed. Uh, he works full time, he's, he's probably lined up for a pension, he's been there that long now. Um, but the, the point being is, the, the woman works as well, but she takes care of the home and she sort of structures things around that. He comes home to a warm dinner, it's a traditional sort of marriage and it works. Um, that's the funny thing, I, I do find sometimes Western women can be very, very defensive um, not all Western women, but some Western women can be very defensive against, well, women should have the right of this. But I, I'm not taking anybody's rights away. I'm just saying I find myself a traditional marriage is much better for a family life. You know, if a woman wants to be independent and single, that's fine. But I do think that a woman doing what I do when I'm working, where I'm working away from home a lot, um, and in a married relationship with kids, it's not good. Because I know when I'm away from home, it's not good for the kids. So having a relationship with, I'm with a partner that's doing the same as I would, would be very de detrimental, detrimental for the kids. 
Um, and that's that's why I sort of say I like a traditional family marriage. Um, I do think the UK could go back to that way if it desired to, but it doesn't. Um, because I think now too many people are forced to work rather than need to work. Oh, sorry, than want to work. Um, so you can't have one person working as easily anymore, unless you're on the benefit system and often it pays to actually only have one working parent. Um, but yeah, preparing for that change. Pay, the cultural change. Um, I know some of the relatives have visited a few of my other friends that have partners in the UK and they don't like it. They find it very cold and unsocial in comparison to what they used to in the Philippines where you pretty much talk to anybody. Um, but in the UK, they don't really have that sense of community in many places. I know, um, I know where in Worcester, for example, most of this, where my parents' house is, it used to be like a nice traditional sort of close, but now it's a student accommodation hellhole. Um, whereas only probably about 20% are actually normal people, the rest are student houses. So there's a lot of social disconnects there in the Philippines. Um, you don't really have in that way. There's always family around, there's always something going on. That isolation being away from family is another thing. How you accommodate for that. I recommend having things like Skype, WhatsApp, looking at what internet's available, not only in wherever you're going, UK or whatever, but also in the Philippines to keep things connected. I mean, my mother-in-law, for example, she, we, she's got internet. Um, I think we bought her a tablet as well. So she's got a tablet as well, so she doesn't have to deal with a computer anymore. Um, and you keep things connected. It's important. F Filipinos are very family oriented. And I know some people say, oh, they're like this or that. If you see the way people are when they're together, it doesn't matter how awkward the situation, they generally get on. The same as when the I remember I was at a factory in Worcester, there was a, a Filipino guy there and I, I just mentioned the, that my wife's from the Philippines and I'm just, just in the UK for a few months or so while back and instantly a big beaming smile and he was treating me like as if I was his long lost brother or something because there was a connection there and I find that with a lot of Filipinos, there, there's a strong connection, the same when I was in Dubai. Uh, the guys at the hotel, well, there were Filipinos that were doing all the um, refilling the coffees and things like that. They were like, oh, you're from the Philippines. Like, well, and they, you know, like you normally only have like two coffees, two teas or whatever. And they're like, oh, they're, 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 it's 20 teas. And, and they were making sure what my whole stay was like <laughs> overfilled with all these extra things that I don't normally get. Um, just because they're like, oh, you're our friend. You know, that was the same. And the airport with 18 suitcases, but that's another story. Um, but the point being is there's a strong connection there. There's a family connection, and it's important you keep that alive and recognize it because it's very easy for somebody to get to a new country and not even think about this stuff, and then suddenly, bang, what do I do now? The, the same happened to a friend of mine uh, out of China because uh, she, she was a Chinese student. She got to Birmingham Airport and she got the train, got into Birmingham uh, New Street Station, the train station, the main train station. And then she just cried as soon as she got off the train because she suddenly just like, I'm here. Now she hadn't even booked any accommodation or anything yet. She literally, she was starting at the university, one of the universities there. Um, but she literally just hadn't even thought about it. Everything's all happy about this trip, and then suddenly she sat on her suitcase at the train station, and suddenly it just hit her that she's in a new country. <laughs> and she's got to find accommodation, she's got to find where she's going to study, and all this other stuff. It was just like, bang, instantly. It's like, what do I do now? And that's the thing. These things do happen. You know, um, if you're not prepared for it, it can be quite hard for some people. Um... So there's those sort of things and trying to keep connections going. One of the things I am a bit wary about is interconnecting with Filipinos that are in 
the UK or in the local community because, like I said, some of them are quite. It's um, the spider waiting to eat the fly. <laughs> you know, you've got to be very careful on some of these people because they man manipulate. Especially, if it's an older woman or whatever that, that your partner may look up to, and some people are very easily manipulated. Just be aware of that. Um, I mean, I've had a few conversations with people about it and they've spoke to their partner about it and they've prepared them for it and then it's happened and then they've gone and told their husband which is an important thing if, if you're aware of it and they come and say look you, you wouldn't believe what she was telling me earlier and then um, you're aware of it she's aware of it you can have a bit of a little laugh about it because uh, you know it's going to happen and then from there you can move forward because at the end of the day you're already aware of it but also your partner has been geared for it. So when this person starts saying these stories about or oh, how they get treated and all this thing that's going to happen to you, they're already aware of it. Because it's untrue, but the whole point is they're starting this story of manipulation to build trust. So just be aware of those sort of things. I'm not saying they always happen, but they, they do happen from time to time. Um, I have to admit, in Spain, everybody we know is pretty good. Uh, we haven't really had that, but then again, everybody we had come and visit us, 90% of them we already know from the Philippines, but the other 10% are in solid relationships. You know, they're, they're married, got kids, or they're, they're in an older age group where they're already settled down, because often a lot of these problems are with the women in there, you know, below 30. Um, what else do you have to think about? Work. You know, in the UK, often everybody works. As I mentioned earlier, it's one of those things that a lot of people think. You're going to go to the West. The, the, the pound's bigger than the peso. You, you, you've got so much money. Yes, the bills are also bigger than the peso. But no, that doesn't come into it. That, over the head. Don't think about that. You have to train people to lie as well in some ways. Um, it's not bad lies, it's what I call sort of, well, white lies. Um, you just don't tell people how much you really earn, or if you are earning, you turn around and break it down a bit so that the expenses are a bit higher. So people are sort of broken into the fact that you're not an ATM um, because they, they don't see it as the same monetary value because there's no connection there. You know, if you turn around and say you earned the equivalent of, say, 50,000 pesos in a week, or uh, even 20,000 pesos, they're thinking, that's a, that's a lot of money. and But it's not. You know, you know, not in the UK, it's not. But at the same time, they don't understand that your electric bill's higher, your water bill's higher, your rent's higher, your mortgage is higher, etc., etc. Because they're not listening to that. They're not interested in that. All they hear is, you and lots of money. So it's much easier to actually, if you say you're earning the equivalent of 20,000, tell them you're in 10. And then you go, oh, I've got to pay the tuition this week, da da da. And it, because although people will not always lean on you, the fact is you're trying to break down the fact that you're not a free ATM for emergencies. You're not a free ATM on a monthly basis. People should earn their own money. I mean, that's one of the things I would say in the Philippines is when people encourage their relatives not to work because it's so low in payments. They forget the self-worth value that you're working and paying your own way in life. Because sitting there on your backside waiting for an aunt to send you money doesn't teach you self-worth. It doesn't teach you value of money. It teaches you nothing. It teaches you to be lazy. And that's something you want to steer your partner away from. Um, I know a few friends have got serious problems with that with their partners. They're working long hours and stuff because... The brother, the sister, the kids, the stepkids, the grandkids, the parents, whatever. They they were poor, so I'm just trying to help them. Yes, but they don't see you doing a 16-hour day, and they do not care. They're enjoying life out in the Philippines on your money. I recommend don't let it happen, but it's very hard to stop. Beyond that, I think if you get through these headaches... Most things are pretty easy going. Uh, finding work, there's always work available. Um, depends on the skill sets, but often 
a lot of the jobs I know, the people I know from the Philippines do, they're content doing them, where often somebody from the UK wouldn't even want to do it. Um, but because they have a, a purpose, you know, at the end of the day, working on a production line, for example, would drive me insane. You know, I'd absolutely hate it. But I know people that sit there, you can hear they're humming away, enjoying it, because they're, they're thinking about their kids, they're thinking about, oh, I'm going to buy this this week, and I've got to phone my mum later, and all this sort of stuff. They're switched off to the work they're doing. Um, and that's one of the advantages. So, yeah, and one of the things I would say is encourage your partner to work because it's for their benefit and your benefit because if they've got their own money, they can make their own decisions, it cuts down on the arguments, but also they can help support with bills as well. Thanks for watching.